This channel supports Extra Life in its efforts to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. For more information about how to donate and join in their efforts, go to the link displayed here. Extra Life. Play games. Heal kids. What up everybody, this is your boy Black Magus. Um, during my hiatus, since uh, my health has been kind of on and off lately, um, you know, some things have happened and... Uh, a couple of days ago, Michael K. Williams, who most of us know as Omar or Chalky White, um, passed, which kind of, it, it was a huge blow to a lot of us because it came out of nowhere, and, you know, the man was 54, you know, which just seems so young these days, um, you know, phenomenal actor, uh, from what I understand, just a great human being overall, uh, and he will be highly missed. Um, so I'm sure, like a lot of us, I decided, you know what? Let me go revisit The Wire. Um, so since I'm stuck at home, you know, trying to recover my uh, mobility, uh, I binge watch the entire first season of The Wire. Um, Damn, I, I had to been up until like 3 a.m. watching this shit. Because I got stuck. I actually did not want to stop. I would only stop for like, you know, bathroom breaks, things like that. Because uh, it's just such a phenomenal show. The Wire stands in that like, you know, that tier of, you know, entertainment that I always say like there are certain things that no matter when they came out, they just always seem to hold, like, you know, to, you know, to hold up, to stay as a piece of, like, art that time doesn't necessarily degrade. Um, you know, of course, you could make an argument that in the time that um, The Wire was done, the way that people talked, dressed and stuff like that of course but just taking it as a timepiece it's flawless because you know a lot of us at that time when it came out in I believe it was what 2002 um the thing that floored us so much about it was how much it like was on point what was going on especially if you grew up in the D.C. area or in the Baltimore area. Um, you know, because even though we didn't have an immediate um, relation to it, we would hear the stories in the D.C. area about you know, the things that go on in Baltimore. Like, you know, we knew about Be More Careful and all that stuff. And, you know, it was all, it's always been, like, you know, funny because... A lot of us up here, um, you know, to phrase, to put it in the phrase, it would be like, yo, those, those Baltimore niggas be wilder. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just how it was. Like, you know, while they be saying it, them DC niggas be wilder, you know? So if you, especially if you were African American and you lived in the, you know, either of those metropolitans. You kind of saw that as like, wow, this is the shit that I like, you know, either have seen, have some type of an association with, or can relate to in some kind of way. And I think that's something that can be true about a lot of black America. Because like, from my, my perspective, I've known people like in the veins of the Avon Barksell, um, Type people, um, you know. I've heard stories of the Marlows and things like that. You know, I've had family involved in situations that, you know, man, <laughs> and this is close relations. That yo, for real. Like I kind of wish I didn't know. Um. So, yeah, 
yeah, it was it was a highly relatable show. Um, and going back and watching the whole first season, it just like you know remembering how like you grew with these characters throughout the time of the series. But you know, not just that, just through the first season. The first season did such a phenomenal job of taking you on a journey with each of these like you know characters and having them evolve in like a 13 episode period like so many people evolve and it challenged your morality and your sense of right and wrong and justice it's like you know like take michael k williams character for instance omar everybody loves omar omar was such a fucking you know he his character is um, like you know you could write theses on on this guy because he had this kind of Robin Hood esque vibe to him, but at the same time, he wasn't like the rob from the rich give to the poor. He was a criminal who robbed criminals, but also sold drugs to people within his community. Or would give them drugs as well. You know? So it's like, yeah, like, there was a scene where you see, like, he's hiding out. By the way, it's a fucking um, 20-year-old series by now. So if you don't know anything about The Wire and you feel like I'm spoiling shit, I'm sorry for doing so. Like, (laughs) it's been out there for consumption for a while. But it's a scene where, like, he's hiding out in one of his users' uh, house. And he's taking care of the baby. Early in the season, you see him, like, you know, show affection to the baby. um, And give her free drugs. And, like, when you flash back to that, you know, situation where she's letting him use her house to hide out. She's shooting up while, you know he's taking care of her baby and she's acting like, do you want some? And he's like, nah, I'm good. And things like that. It's just like, you know, you love Omar, but it's like, should you really love Omar? Cause yeah, you know, the man's got a cold, you know, one of the most iconic lines are like, you know, Hey Bay, you know, lesson here when you come at the King, best not miss, you know, things like that. Like, yeah, it, such he has such a gravitating force as far as his personality but he's a fucking scumbag he's not like you know he's he's one of the cleanest people in a cesspool swimming in a cesspool that's about the best that you could say about him and you know and then the dynamic that he's a homosexual you know you know openly you know, that is played out and how, like, you know, the other, uh, you know, gangsters and stuff like that, you know, be like, you know, why is this dude, you know, and you, the language, of course, they used, we wouldn't use now, but, of course, back then, it was openly open to be using, you know, the F word and things like that and calling him cocksucker and all that stuff and, like, making fun of him, but, like, he was also the hardest motherfucker out there. And this to other people, like, you see the, like, evolution of McNulty, um, the cop who started off, you know, because he was being a smartass and thought that he could prove that he's right. And just the evolution of how he starts to understand, like, you know, the shit that I do fucks other people, even though I think what I'm doing, you know, will ultimately... Expose, you know, again, it's kind of like, you know, my sense of justice, I'm going to prove to you why it should be done this way. But along the way, you see, like, how the comp- consequences and repercussions aren't as, like, black and white as he thinks they should be. You know? Um, you know, Greg's and how she evolved. Um, it became such a strong character. And again, another openly homosexual character within, you know, the series. Um, 
who openly talked about how you know, like people addressed her and things like that as a lesbian officer and thing, you know. Um, Press Belusky, like somebody who you wouldn't have thought would have like had the evolution he had, who you looked at as like this is a fuck up who did like a horrible thing, but he developed into like a pretty good cop as far as like doing his job is concerned. Um, just all of it, like it's 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 full of a lot of things. Like you could pretty much just about snatch every member member of that like unit um that were working the Boschdale case and can find like how they've took like a progressive arc and again this is all within 13 episodes you know 13 about an hour episodes hour hour 15 minutes depending on how they wanted to do the length episodes you know what i mean you had so much of the Stringer Bell um, progression as you, you know, it, Avon and how you could see how he, you know, got even more paranoid and things like that as time went on. Um, D'Angelo, of course, was a great tri- progression because you got this guy who's in the business because of the family ties and who pretty much just like, you know, Kind of, you know, was trying to figure out why is he doing this and you know where uh, the kids, you know, Bodie, Poot, Wallace, their journey, you know, that had kind of a sad ending, uh, of course, because you know the where's Wallace thing. It's just all. It's just so much. And watching it again, it's just like, yo, I really know why we still fuck with this so hard. Because there is just so much to fuck with and so much to break that. Like, you can have so many discussions. You have so, you know, many case studies, all of this stuff. And, again, being somebody who not wasn't from the Baltimore area but grew up not that far and, you know, knew people and what have you, it was just like, yo, this is the real shit. Like, yo. Like, David Simon really did put a piece of, like, you know, media out there that showed the world what the life was like at that time. And, you know, again, it stands as one of those things that no matter how old it gets, it just, it's still a masterpiece, you know. Now, I think I will do another video for season two um, because one, I'm one of the few people who like season two. I found like season two shouldn't be have been as divisive as it should, but I want to watch it again to kind of concrete my um, thoughts on that, you know, to reaffirm why I feel like people need to stop fucking shitting on season two. Um, but yeah, I was glad to like spend the 13 hours and I'll probably, you know, since I'm still kind of recovering, I might be spending another, like, 13, 14 hours digesting uh, season two. So, anyway, as always, you guys, feel free to hit me up. Let me know what you think, and I'll holler at you later. This your boy, Black Megas, and I'm out. Deuces.